so you know me, but for the people that don't know me, uh, I was uh, 12 years in the U.S. Army EOD, uh, served two deployments. Uh, after that, was picked up briefly by the State Department to work in IED awareness and safety in Southeast Asia, uh, and then later on uh, worked for Raven Group, uh, being able to do mostly in Thailand, but also Indonesia, Malaysia, basically Southeast Asia, uh, to teach about IED threats and awareness. Uh, so overall, I've been doing this since about 2001 uh, and teaching in this. So today for the course, uh, normally it's a two-day course, but we're going to squish it into one days. Uh, we're going to go over IEDs, exactly what are they, uh, so that we kind of cut through the noise that's in the press. You'll learn exactly what IEDs are. Component parts and hazards, uh, homemade explosives. Then we're getting into the tactics. So what are the threats that are out there? Uh, and then basically how you should respond and report those to the police, to the EOD, how you report those up. Um, and then introduction to some techniques for search. Uh, and then on the second day, generally we go more into practical applications of search to train you to search people, buildings, routes, vehicles uh, to be safe. So for example, stolen vehicles, uh, how to search, how to look for those, uh, look those things up. This is Southern Thailand uh, in uh, 2012. Uh, of course, a reported motorbike was stolen. So, like, no, no, it's a five. They paid it over, right? Because you, you know, thieves do it. Oh! Wow. So, did two people die? Uh, one person died. Wow. There's a U.S. student. In this case, in this specific incident, uh, the jammer that they had, you know, that's supposed to jam all the signals, uh, may have been low on battery. Yeah. We don't know. Uh -huh. Also, timers. Jammers don't do anything on timers. Timer, not to the control to the uh, headphone like that? We don't know. So that's, no, we that's the thing. Sometimes you don't know. You know the triggers, but you don't know. Uh -huh. So what we'll do today is okay. uh, how to avoid that. Okay. So what we're doing is called IED awareness and search. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a security and explosive security response for concealed hazards. So basically how you in any job that you have I uh, can do that. There's me. <laughs> so I'm going to make this uh, full on so we see everything. Our Raven security to if we want to improve, improve, improve one more, probably we have to take to the class and then we can offer to the job, the airport, the port, something everywhere. like that. Absolutely. Yes. Everywhere, everywhere yeah. that security is. Uh -huh. So IEDs. Mm -hmm. Right? Basically an IED is anything I can make it. Okay. Right? Anything. <laughs> That's the scary part about IEDs. Uh, for example, your, your cell phone is a perfect sensor for IEDs, right? It's got a timer in it. I can call into it, make it go beep. It's perfect, mm -hmm. right? So this is a sophisticated trigger. Mm -hmm. uh, I can set up cell phones so that if somebody comes in proximity, if the temperature changes, there's a lot of sensors in here. Um, but you don't even need a cell phone. If I go to a store, right? Mm -hmm. Little t kids toys for like $5. If it goes beep, you know, when you move your uh, hand, beep. If it can go beep, mm -hmm. it can go boom. Yeah. Very easy. So things that 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you have to pay $100,000 million for, for sensors and you know, electronic components for bombs and targets and you know, oh. missile technology, it's in a kid store now. Oh. It's so cheap, it's so easy. And that's why it's so dangerous. That's why IEDs have become so very dangerous. And then you combine that with uh, homemade explosives, which we'll show a little bit later. Uh, and you can, with hair bleach, nail polish remover, and car battery acid, I can make a, I can make explosive very dangerous. So this is a military piece of ordnance, right? You buy this from Italy, <laughs> or, or your favorite arms dealer, uh, and these are anti-tank mines, right? Okay. So tanks designed to go over it. This is not an IED, right? This is a military ordnance. Yeah. It's a mine, right? Mm -hmm. Or it could be a grenade or a bomb. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. if I modify it beyond mm -hmm. what the manufacturer does, mm -hmm. if I now put, let's say, my cell phone up to it, mm -hmm. right, and I use the cell phone as a booby trap so somebody walks in, mm -hmm. if I modify it, I improvise it, now it's an improvised explosive device. Mm -hmm. If it's not used exactly as it was designed by a factory, by a military mm -hmm. ordinance, now it becomes improvised explosive device. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that makes people confused. They'll look at a grenade, call it an ID, mm -hmm. or they'll look at something that's modified and not call it that. If I change it, it becomes an improvised explosive device. So vehicle-borne improvised explosive device, mm -hmm. that's a car bomb, real simple. Okay. WBIED. Mm -hmm. That mean is what? <laughs> that's, that's exactly, it's funny. Water. I don't, I don't, I, I cannot guess W. But water, water waterborne IED, okay. so a boat bomb, oh, right? Okay. <laughs> Something that floats, right? <laughs> RCIED, this is funny. 
<laughs> RC meaning what? Remote, remote control. Remote, remote control. control. Yeah. yeah, so the FBI, DHS, everybody comes up with all these anagrams, right? Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. All of these basically are fundamentally an improvised explosive device. Mm -hmm. The triggers, what makes them go boom, is the same thing. Okay. So the skill sets that I need to learn are the same. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the government likes to make things look very complicated. Okay. No, they're the same thing. Okay. Just called by different names. IED has three hazardous forces associated with it, right? So if I take an explosive, right, what kills me? That's what I want to know, right? What destroys things, breaks things, and kills me? So in an explosive, right, like C4, we're all familiar with C4, uh, it has three effects. There's a blast effect, right, boom. There's fragmentation, which is the little pieces that come out. Uh, and then there's the thermal effect. And all three of those will destroy things and kill people. So those three things we have to watch out for. So this is, this is the effects, the blast effects. So we're going to run this in a car bomb. But in slow motion, you can see all three effects here. So let's go back a little bit. So the first effect you can see, and it may not show up real well here, but you see this uh, this little line right here? Uh -huh. That's your blast wave. Uh -huh, blast wave. Yep. Is it, it's going to the wind or something like that. Exactly. So what happens fire, is... Fire wind. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the difference between an explosion and a burning is the speed at which it goes out. This is C4. Yep. So a lot of, a lot of explosive in there. So what happens is, is it's very fast mm -hmm. and it creates a shock wave that pushes the oxygen out. Okay. So there's a vacuum in here. There's no oxygen in here. This goes out. Uh -huh. Boom. Uh -huh. So it pushes the atmosphere out. Uh -huh. And that blast wave, when it goes through your body, mm -hmm. will create injuries okay. inside. Okay. Exactly. So what it does is, is your, your air sacs, your uh, spleen, your liver, the fluid in the air mm -hmm. will expand differently mm -hmm. and they'll burst inside. Yeah, I got a few before, you know, the castle. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the it, uh, uh, I didn't uh, know exactly in a gas, you know, in the crowd, mm -hmm. and I tried to, you know, uh, the uh, lighting, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it just uh, like that. Huh? Similar, yeah. I can feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then depending on the explosive is the force of the blast yes. wave uh -huh. uh, and the distance of the blast wave and that sort of thing. So that's one effect. Okay. Now, when it creates this vacuum, uh -huh. the other thing it does is it goes back in. Okay. So you get hit twice, boom, out, okay. and then return. Okay. So that creates injuries. Mm -hmm. If you're inside a building, for example, uh -huh. the blast wave, just like sound, reflects. Uh -huh. So I'll have one, two, three, I've been hit oh. with a blast wave. Okay. Uh, now with blast injuries, this is a different course with blast injuries, but sometimes you can look fine, mm -hmm. but inside you're bleeding, inside uh -huh. you're bleeding out. Uh, even though nothing happened on the outside. So blast injury is, is very critical. So that's the blast. Mm -hmm. The second thing you can see a little bit in there mm -hmm. is uh, the fragmentation, right? The pieces of the car that are mm -hmm. coming out, okay. that's the fragmentation. Okay. Like bullets, you know, it goes right through you. Oh, <laughs> I see. So that's good. And then the final one is the thermal. Mm -hmm. the thermal's fairly quick okay. uh, and it's limited, but it will you know, have its effect. Mm -hmm. So you have your thermal event around here, the heat. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that'll catch materials on fire, uh, cauterize, sometimes cauterize, you know, wounds, flesh, all that sort of thing. So that's those are your three effects uh, of an explosive. So every explosive, you may not see everything, but everything is present within there. This is designed to come apart, mm -hmm. and that creates fragmentation like bullets through the body. Okay. I see. However, mm -hmm. everything in your environment mm -hmm. is also fragmentation, secondary fragmentation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm holding you know, the explosive device, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. <laughs> over here, and I blow up, mm -hmm. my bones will go into you, your bones will go into them, yes. fragmentation throughout. Uh, Keep going. Exactly. So for, for injuries, it's, uh, you got to watch out for infections. It's actually something most people don't think about, is a lot of the infections. Right? This is a school. Uh, where a bomb went off, unfortunately. So you can see the ball bearings. It was an IED. So they took those little, you know, metal ball bearings. Yeah. Boom, and those went out. But as you see, the the, the pieces of the, the furniture becomes fragmentation. The students became fragmentation. Um, so you have a lot of that. Uh, the secondary injuries, uh, infections. Always, always be careful of infections, uh, especially a chemical environment. Uh, if you have uh, storage tanks with chemicals, uh, a truck with chemicals, if that blows up, you get those chemicals in you. The poison. Infections, exactly. Yes. So be very, very cautious. Uh, some long-term care in there. Uh, thermal, of course. Uh, the heat. Uh, now be careful. There's a flash injuries. So in first response, so if you have an explosion, boom. A lot of times, some people will run inside. Right. Well, I got to help these people. I got to help these people. It, it could be very hot. So we've had people run in to help, mm -hmm. and then the stuff catches on fire because the oxygen comes back in, it smolders, boom, and they're trapped inside because of the fire. Yeah, I hear about the you know, 911, mm -hmm. many the firemen and the police officer, they're not ready to go to the help to the you know, people, but later they got to the skin and the something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like that. Power source can be electric or non-electric. Mm -hmm. 
right? Electricity is a battery. That's mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, what's a non-electric source? Electric and the battery. Right, electric is a battery. Mm -hmm. And then what, what do you think a, uh, a non-electric source would be? Non-electric source. Uh, power source. Probably power source or something. I have to think about what it is. <laughs> every, every 4th uh, of July we use it. Oh, yeah, it's quick. Right? Yes, yep. correct. Not like it's a fire, right? Yeah, you can actually light, yes, fire. light yes, a fuse. Yes. So you also have non-electric. Mm -hmm. It's a match. Uh, match. <laughs> every 4th yeah. of July uh -huh. we have little. <laughs> so we do. Okay. Right. Blasting caps. Okay. Right. Blasting caps are also called detonators, and they just oh. look like little tubes. Okay. And there's electric, which mm -hmm. looks like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's non-electric, which mm -hmm. just looks like the little mm -hmm. aluminum cap. Okay. Nice. Again, I apologize for no training aid, but <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, no now we see them. Better eye on this. Yeah, make me on. Yeah. And and those actually have a small uh, hazard because they're a little a little explosive in there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you step on them, they might go off. Mm -hmm. If you touch them with with your static electricity, mm -hmm. they could go off. Mm -hmm. Not much damage. They could probably you know rip open your hand a little bit. Or you know hurt, but there's still a little bit of a hazard in there. Like a matching, matching. Exactly. And then they set the explosive off. So if I if I just put nine volts in here, it's not going to do anything, right? I can hit this, I can bang it around, nothing. Nothing. But if I put one of those little military caps in there, or an explosive detonator cap, and I put the little bit of energy in that, that goes pack, and then that makes this go pack. So kind of like dominoes. A little little domino goes big domino goes big domino. So that's what this does. The energy. Uh, your power source mm -hmm. hits this, goes through a switch, mm -hmm. and then knocks your cap, which then does your explosive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, they're also left if you go to construction sites, mm -hmm. forestry sites, construction dynamite. sites, dam building. Exactly. They'll leave dynamite. I mean, they'll leave cases of dynamite. They forget about it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're in Tacoma, what, uh, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. They were they were cleaning out mm -hmm. old buildings, and they found cases of dynamite. Oh, yeah. Right, just case. Somebody hiding over there. Exactly. <laughs> now, with dynamite, this is kind of a replica of, of, yeah. of exuding dynamite. The mm. old dynamite, mm. uh, even if you see it like this, uh -huh. right? Oh, it's a danger. Exactly. So, mm. over time, the older dynamite had mm. nitroglycerin in it. Mm -hmm. And nitroglycerin forms little salt crystals mm -hmm. that'll exude out. Uh -uh. And it looks like little crystals. Okay. If I just bend this, it's going to blow up. It's more dangerous over time. Uh -huh. When it was new, no problem. I could, uh -huh. you know, okay, that's no problem. Without the fire, it's exactly. Trouble. But like like my uncle, mm -hmm. as it gets older, it gets meaner, <laughs> right? So that's what happened to this. Uh -huh. So if you see things like this, this in itself, I just do this, uh -huh. and I'm like, what is this? Uh -huh. I could set it off. Uh -huh. Very dangerous. Uh -huh. So keep that in mind. Commercial explosives uh -huh. can be very dangerous uh -huh. just by themselves. Uh -huh. Wow. And they're all in this area. So logging operations, mining operations, construction, uh, and they can be stolen. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Also within commercial, of course, you have dynamite. Mm -hmm. Right? So two types of dynamite, the nitrocellulose, nitroglycerin, mm -hmm. civilian military. Oh. Uh, you'll see this a lot. People don't realize this is actually mm -hmm. a, a shock tube. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of PETN explosive in there, and it sends a oh. shock tube down there. Wow. So you can that's what sets this, you can oh. set off a cap and oh. set those off. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. This one's another one. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I wish I had more. Uh, deck core. Oh. Civilian dead court. Okay. So military member it was green. Our dead court was uh -huh. green, right? It looks like okay. time fuse. But yeah. uh, civilian, they make it look like little bungee cords. Uh, they can be, if you look in there, all different colors. Like yeah, so you'll see plaid uh. colors, bright red, uh -huh. orange, green. Okay. It, and people think it's a toy. Uh -huh. But if I crimp it wrong uh -huh. or set a match to it, uh -huh. bam, uh -huh. it'll. This is what cuts trees. Maybe you wrap it around trees. Uh -huh. So this explodes. It doesn't. Pss, not okay. a fuse. Uh -huh. Bam, it'll go off. Uh -huh. So this could be very hazardous too uh -huh. uh, if you wrap it up. Uh -huh. Dangerous. There's some oh. of the dead cord right okay. there. Commercial explosives. So being aware of this is important. What else do they sell? Everything. Nitro, uh -huh. big bags. People think it's fertilizer, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. But it's it's explosive uh -huh. canfo, ammonium uh -huh. nitrate fuel oil, uh -huh. right? But uh -huh. people sometimes mistake it for fertilizer. Oh. So all of this is commercially okay. available and everywhere. Oh. <laughs> There's a picture of what they found in the building. Oh. <laughs> so the other thing is Danger. exactly. The other thing is uh, liquid explosives, right? A dangerous one. It's homemade explosives. Okay. Now, homemade explosives, <laughs> this is the one because mm -hmm. it's homemade. Mm -hmm. There's no safety standards on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how sensitive or not sensitive it is. Mm -hmm. The other thing with, with homemade explosives mm -hmm. is you can make it out of, like I said, hair bleach, mm -hmm. nail polish remover, hair bleach. If you go to the, the beauty store, uh -huh, uh -huh. if I get hydrogen peroxide yeah. in a certain strength, uh -huh. hydrogen peroxide, uh -huh. nail polish remover, which uh -huh. is acetone, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, and acid. Did the, sometimes you know the, I saw to the you know, water mm -hmm. come to the when you pull, pull away electric, you know, spark the yes, a spark out, you know. Yep. Yes, uh -huh. yep, so you have to I saw that. that. You have to be aware of that for uh -huh. sure. Uh -huh. So if you have beauty supply store, hair bleach, nail polish remover, and an acid, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a, a car battery mm -hmm. or uh, uh, cooking acid or things uh -huh. like that. 
I can make the most dangerous explosive right now, which is TATP, uh, triacetyl triphosphate. Mm -hmm. So that explosive uh, is very prevalent in the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh. Everybody loves to use it, but it's very dangerous. In uh -huh. fact, if I put it in a, in a canister mm -hmm. and I, I drop the canister, it could blow up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm unscrewing it, uh -huh. if, it's, if a little bit's on the thread, uh -huh. slam, it'll blow up. Oh. So very, very dangerous, uh, TATP. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily it has kind of a short shelf life, so that's the good news, but it's very easy to make. The problem here in the Northwest, for example, is there's a lot of people that make meth, right? The drug, meth, meth labs, right? Meth labs. If you can make a meth lab, it's very easy to make a TATP lab. Four component is it to the uh, web uh, <laughs> power source. Power source, yep. And then switch. Yep. And then uh, detonation. Yes. And then, uh, what is the one more thing? Oh, the material. Explosive. Yeah, exactly. explosive. Yes. Right. So you have those four components. Yes. So we're going to look at this and say, is this an IED? Mm -hmm. Right? So what's that? Power Battery, source. Right? Yes. There's power a power source. source. Uh -huh. Now it's kind of hard to see here, but where do you think the switch is? Switch is. Examine it with that one. Top button. Oh, other way. Oh, okay. Switch. Is. Switch. Okay, so there's a switch. Uh -huh. And then the detonator. Detonator, this one. Mm. Remember, detonator has to be in the explosive, right? Uh huh. It is. So the detonator is actually here because that's oh, the explosive, oh, oh, right? Oh, okay. There is it to the map. There, yeah. yeah, kind of hard to yeah. see, but if I had the training, it'd be a little yeah. easier. But there's the explosive, and the detonator is almost always in the explosive because yes, this yeah. one makes it go off. Uh, power source. Almost. There we go. Power source. Very good. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, tr what's next? Uh, this is it to the. Detonation? Exactly, yeah. You can actually see the detonator right there. A little bit of the tube. Very good, very good. Electrical detonator. Good. Uh, we just switch. <laughs> uh, I can have two, as long as you identify uh, right. uh, So that's a little odd thing, right? Uh, Looks like a switch there, right? Switching. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, what's this thing? This is to the, uh, the timer or something like that? That's another switch. Remember the old pagers? You yeah. can do those pagers? <laughs> so that's a switch, right? Because if it goes beep, it goes boom. So in this one, absolutely, and again, another safe and arm switch. We'll show you this in a minute. So this mm -hmm. this makes it safe. Mm -hmm. I turn on the pager, beep, beep, mm -hmm. right? So bloop, that goes on. And then when I walk, I start to walk away, then I turn it on, boom, wow. that goes down. Wow. And this is the car, and then you can drive it, and this is the modification. He mm -hmm. sets it, pushes it, and then it blows up. Oh. <laughs> so if you didn't know the model, you'd think there's nothing wrong here. Because if I look at it from the outside, uh -huh. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell all that's in there, right? They map to the inside like that. Exactly. Uh -huh. See, and then the only thing that kind of sets it off is mm -hmm. that little that little thing right there, which makes that go boom. Uh -huh. So sometimes knowing modifications uh, is important. Uh -huh. Now here's fun. This is fun one. Mm -hmm. Where are the where are the four components on this one? <laughs> this is an actual bomb. This is London seven seven. This uh, this one. Mm -hmm. What's that? Is a compound. That's the explosive? Yep. Explosive, yes. And then, might be this is a detonation? Detonator, yep, yep. And then, where's the switch? <laughs> switch is there? Nope, close. Uh, this one? Close. Every 4th of July. 4th of July, right? Fire, fire. So my hand is the switch, right? Uh huh. Sometimes the human can be the switch. Oh, really? Because right? I'm making it go off, <laughs> <That's> right? <true. laughs> so my thumb, and uh, what's the, the, the power source is the fire, right? Okay. So as I, tss, I light it, I'm uh -huh. the switch, Okay. and the power source is the lighter going on there. Okay. So kind of a trick a trick question, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but suicide bombers, uh, right? Suicide bombers are the switch, and, right? Yeah. They are the switch. Uh -huh. So sometimes people don't understand, uh -huh. if I need to get rid of the switch, mm -hmm. I might have to shoot the suicide bomber. Okay. Why? Yeah. He can make it go off, right? Uh, I see. <laughs> So that's important. Uh -huh. So understanding, you know, sometimes there's some nuance there. Uh -huh. So for whatever, he couldn't get air, so he drowned in there. So they found it floating, but that's filled with explosives. Uh -huh. And it's going here. Then they upped their game. This is actually just welded together. It's like a, like a couple canoe hulls. Uh -huh. They welded it together, pack it with explosives, and it goes after the Indian Navy ships. Uh -huh. So Sri Lanka does that. Now, a lot of the Tamils, uh -huh. the same group that made these bombs, and a lot of suicide bombers, uh, went to Canada in Vancouver. So oh. about 500, 600 of them mm. were given refuge in mm. Canada. Oh. So the guys with this in their mindset are mm. up in Canada. Okay. If they get involved in crime, mm. if they get a, a domestic dispute and want to kill their wife, mm. 
they can make some good bombs, oh. and they're right up the road, oh. and they could be down here by now. Oh. So understanding that, that maybe this is overseas, but where do these people travel? They come here to America, they go to Canada, they travel around, these ideas move around. So never think, because something is over there, it won't come over here. Very easy to move. So ah, here we go, I've seen this one, no kidding. What do you think ABI ideas? Air, bomb, air bomb. Could be, uh, air, airborne, airborne improvised explosive bomb. Uh, airborne. Close. Airborne. It's act, no kidding. It's actually Airborne. Airborne. There's act, they actually put. Uh, yeah. So what they did was was these donkeys move in and out of Colombia, right? Uh -huh. Animals walk everywhere in some uh -huh. countries, right? Uh -huh. Nobody pays attention uh -huh. to them. So they actually put a bomb strapped to one of the donkeys, and it walked uh -huh. in the military area because okay. they didn't care. Uh -huh. and it blew up. So uh -huh. you can have animal-born IEDs. Uh -huh. So realize that they can go anywhere. They can do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Any questions so far? Uh -huh. All right. So that was that much explosive. Oh, really? That's it. Little one. Very little. I'll take that much. That's it. Quarter. We call quarter. Half. So as example, but you get different uh, explosions from it. I want to show you the one I've shown him, mm -hmm. which is the dead cord. Okay. There you go. So this is dead cord. Okay. See the string? Mm -hmm. That's this. Oh, the explosion. Oh, exactly. <laughs> So, and this is the, the deck cord, mm -hmm. and the only thing we've done is we took one deck cord, uh -huh. and then those are deck cords, and that's just little bottles of uh, gas. Under. Just gas, yeah. yeah so gas. these are just, just plastic bottles, uh -huh. water bottle, with a little bit of gasoline in it. Okay. I see. But see how fast it goes. And so this is deck cord. Going through, one through, and the first through, and going to the, the explorer? Exactly. Oh. As you can tell, I'm not the video editor, so he's much better than this. He, he could edit these a little better. Yes, you would. Yes. <laughs> so you wrap it around a tree, tree goes away. It's very fast, very quick. And again, that's just this little thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, just a little bit of dead cord okay. uh, goes a long way. Okay. So uh, we've talked about the, the fundamentals of explosives. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to get into uh, mm -hmm. is a little bit of the safety. Uh -huh. And this is the building block mm -hmm. for how you're going to mm -hmm. operate search procedures. Mm -hmm. right? So your normal day-to-day -day duties, mm -hmm. but just when you recognize the threat, what are the safety things I do mm -hmm. so that I don't get killed or hurt, mm -hmm. or hurt somebody else? Mm -hmm. So that's what we go over. Mm -hmm. So we talked earlier mm -hmm. about the three types of switches. Mm -hmm. We talked about you know, mechanical, mm -hmm. we talked about electronic, mm -hmm. and chemical switches, right? Okay. So that's technical. Mm -hmm. But for first responders, mm -hmm. we need to think of switches in a different way. Mm -hmm. And those ways are this, and that's why I'd say this is different. Mm -hmm. There's a victim operated switch, mm -hmm. there's a command operated switch, mm -hmm. and there's a time mm -hmm. operated switch. Victim means what, the suicide? Victim, ah, no, no, here's the fun part. So victim uh -huh. is something I do mm -hmm. kills me, uh -huh. right? Suicide. Okay. No. Well, kind of. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not needing to kill myself. So, uh, for example, mm -hmm. if there is, ah, here we go. If there is a book, a book IED, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's on your bookshelf right here, right? Oh, I under somebody's thing. Right, and I come through here and I go, hey, come on, book, boom, right. Oh. So what I don't know is there's a bomb in the book, uh -huh. right? <laughs> See? Uh -huh. So this would be a victim-operated IED. Because if I open the book, if it's designed that I open it, boom, mm -hmm. something I do is going to kill me. Mm -hmm. So in my search procedures, mm -hmm. if I take this out and I start looking, bam, mm -hmm. I am victim-operated. Okay. And it could be electronic, uh -huh. it could be mechanical, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter, I kill myself. Because mm -hmm. to, the, to the, the security guard, mm -hmm. he doesn't care if it's electronic or mechanical, I just don't want to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So something I do kills me, so I have to be careful about what I do. Okay. Control. All right, I'm looking and I'm going to try to kill you. So somebody else is going to kill you, like a, a gun and a bullet. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you with, with targeting. Okay. And it can be a wire, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. And then time, mm -hmm. so a timer device, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Fate will kill you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. going to happen. So you remember the video from the beginning, right? The motorcycle and the, and the Thai police and the motorcycle, right? Mm -hmm. That may have just been fate. The timer went off. Fine. You don't know. Fine. So you know, always, always treat, okay. treat as if all three are present. 
So that's keep those in mind. So victim command and time. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So victim, something I do is going to kill me. Mm-hmm. Command, somebody else is going to kill me. Mm-hmm. Time, it's just, it's just bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> so victim safety, what can we do? Mm-hmm. Number one, watch what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times people that mm-hmm. are doing searches, they're mm-hmm. used to looking for drugs, they're looking for contraband, mm-hmm. and they get very heavy handed. They start tearing things up and pulling things out very mm-hmm. aggressively. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a, where you believe that there might be an IED threat, uh, the least amount of disturbance is better. Because mm. everything you move, everything you open could be, if it's victim operated, mm. I'm setting it off. So what you want to do is search mostly with your eyes, mm-hmm. confirm, mm-hmm. and then move, and if you can move remote, mm-hmm. even better. And we'll go over those techniques, but be very cautious. You need to calm down a lot with it. So almost that the searching first time. Exactly. Look, search, Look. calm, methodical, yes. right? Because mm-hmm. you're looking... Something in that room can kill you. Right? No, yeah. It's not like finding drugs. I'm looking for the drugs. Mm-hmm. That bomb is looking for me. Big like a snake. Uh-huh. Somebody hit a snake in this room, uh-huh. and I gotta watch out for that snake. Uh-huh. So I get very cautious about it. Um, I want the people, you know, uh, the vehicle searching time. Mm-hmm. Like that. Very good. Yes. Uh-huh. Same, same principle. Yes. Exactly. Same, uh-huh. the, the other thing is, uh, if you have canines, mm-hmm. so for example, if you're your security guards have canines. Canine, yeah. Some canines are play dogs, okay. right? If they see like a drug dog, mm-hmm. he sees a bag and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, there's drugs in it, mm-hmm. he'll come up, nuzzle and shake it. Mm-hmm. But a canine explosive mm-hmm. threat dog mm-hmm. should be well trained to sit. Oh, sit response. I see. Can't train either. Exactly. In mm-hmm. many places in the world today, still, mm-hmm. their dogs will nuzzle and play. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Make sure to sit, right? Mm-hmm. So be very cautious. If you're going to do a team, mm-hmm. ask the canine guy, hey, mm-hmm. is he a play or a sit, mm-hmm. right? If he's a play, I uh, no, we don't need it. Thank you. <laughs> go, go, go somewhere else. Watch out. Um, observe safety is a response card. We have a response card that we'll give out. Become familiar with triggers. Uh, this is fun because usually mm-hmm. what can activate things, mm-hmm. uh, learn about that. What mm-hmm. sets things off? What mm-hmm. makes alarms go beep? So then you can know what you can do to, to not make it go beep. Uh, and then become skilled in search. Keep training search. Search is a perishable skill. Mm-hmm. So if you don't train in it about once a year, you kind of lose it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, command. Mm. So if it's a command device, some of the safeties you can do is limit mm. external observers. This is very important. So if you come up and you say, ah, I think I found a suspicious bag, mm. and you're security guard, right? Mm. I need to move everybody back. Everybody get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Mm. Well, one of those people might be the bomber with the remote control, mm. right? The further back that I go, the more difficult it is uh, for him to set that device off. So for example, if you have uh, car keys, I heard you. Right, your mm-hmm. car keys, right? Mm-hmm. This is an actual trigger, right? Oh, for home. Yeah. But you know, if you're away from your car, you don't I can't get in my car. Mm-hmm. You have to walk around to try to get close, uh, right? Yeah. So if I can get that bomber in the crowd, get back, get back, get back, mm-hmm. I might save my life because he can't set the bomb off. Mm-hmm. I've pushed him beyond the range of his device. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's one simple thing you can do, uh-huh. and it also keeps everybody safe. Because mm-hmm. if the bomb goes off, you don't want anybody near the bomb and mm-hmm. right? get him back. Mm-hmm. So that's very important, and that's something sadly you don't see a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, control the media mm-hmm. because sometimes people are looking at the live stream on YouTube or mm-hmm. Facebook. Right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're looking. They're like, "Aha! He can dial in from a phone in a hotel. He set the bomb. He's watching live. Mm-hmm. There's the police. Now I'm going to set it off, right? Because I can I can call on a cell phone mm-hmm. watching on Facebook. Mm-hmm. See live. Oh. So I don't want the media to go live feed. Oh. Never okay. because they'll they'll know when the bomber's there. Got him. And then oh. he can be away and call it in. Oh. So limit the media. Give them something else to do. Uh, if you have jammers, use jammers, uh, but you saw they may not work or may work, so mm-hmm. be cautious about that. Also, you have to check your local laws. Mm-hmm. Some places only police can use jammers and only if the FBI gives them permission to use jammers. Mm-hmm. So be cautious about that. Ask what your local laws are for that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, exclusion areas. If you're doing security, mm-hmm. um, try to keep everybody safe everybody and back. Knows. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's important. So that's mm-hmm. basic ones for command safety. Mm-hmm. Time. Mm-hmm. This is real simple. Limit your time exposure, distance to cover. Mm-hmm. So you never know when a timer device is going to go off, right? Mm-hmm. So if at any moment this thing can go off, I don't want to stand here and look at it. Mm-hmm. Once you think it's a threat, go. <laughs> don't go, huh, I don't know. But I mean, we've seen it. We've seen people I've, every day. I mean, sadly, you would see people going, I don't know, maybe it's a bomb. Maybe, you know, they're sitting there talking about it. It's like, if you, if you even go, <laughs> don't stand around, just go. Um, and that's important. So, mm-hmm. As soon as you get the the, the, the feeling it's a bomb, mm-hmm. go, go away. Okay. And then distance and cover, mm-hmm. that's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll go over this later, the Shahid bomber, mm-hmm. that's his own switch, because he can move and do everything. Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll go back over these real quick. These are the deck cords that we talked about. Mm-hmm. They can come in all different sizes, all different types. Mm-hmm. Now there is an electrical threat with this one. Mm-hmm. 
So you know, if you if you run your feet on a on a thing and you touch the door, pow, right? Uh -huh. Get shocked. So sometimes if you do a static on this, it will set this off. Oh. So yeah, exactly. So I can touch this, and this may go pop in oh. in improvised caps and some commercial caps. So all it takes is 0.5 volts to set that thing off. So human agent to the human uh, have to if, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that. because it's the. Uh, What's called the chong chong gi? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, electric. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay. So if and, and worse, so in a uh, post blast, we, and this is a safety issue. So even if a bomb has gone up, boom, mm -hmm. right, and you're going in to help out, and there's trash everywhere, mm -hmm. there's all the, the the debris on the floor. Mm -hmm. So you could touch, mm -hmm. and it's still attached a little bit. Some bombs don't go off all the way. Wow. You can set off more explosion or more danger. Oh. So be oh. aware of these even wow. post blasts. It's a safety issue. Okay. Those are the non-electric, uh, and so you'll put those like on the non-L, you can put the caps on that. So non-electric, uh, those, you don't have to worry about the static, uh, but if you if you crush them, accidentally step on them, uh, that might go off. These are improvised. <laughs> These are homemade. Mm -hmm. So remember the TATP that we talked about? Mm -hmm. Hair bleach, nail polish remover, and acid? That's, <laughs> that's TATP. It looks like uh, sugar crystals. Yeah. Right? Sometimes a, a powder, but almost every time it's yes, like a I sugar. The powder? Well, it looks like a sugar crystal. Like if you take sugar, uh -huh, sugar. looks just like sugar. Oh, <laughs> right? sugar can do like that? Well, it's TATP. So oh. This is, this is explosive. It okay. looks like sugar. Okay. So when you I, I, I thought like regular sugar. sugar. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you can, but you know, it's, it's, it's another lesson. So TATP is here, and what they did was they took a, a light bulb, a little flashlight bulb, uh -huh. and, or Christmas light. Uh -huh. So there's the filament in there, right? A little heat filament, and then they just put it in contact with it, wrapped it in paper, and they made their own little homemade detonator. Oh. See? And this is dangerous because it's TATP. I can squeeze it, crush it, boom, mm. it'll blow up. So not very safe. Okay. Little light bulb, mm. and then that goes, that goes in your Put it inside, and then back to the... Uh, exactly. So that's the, that's the fun part. Mm. Military, you don't even have to worry about mm -hmm. uh, fireworks. Mm -hmm. Now this is interesting. Mm -hmm. The fireworks one's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you had a your friend had a question earlier about how many bombs are in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and surprisingly, a lot. You just don't hear about the news. Mm -hmm. Pipe bombs, mm -hmm. very very popular. Mm -hmm. Pipe bombs with black powder inside. Mm -hmm. Another one that I think I've got a video up here mm -hmm. is a sparkler bomb. Mm -hmm. So if I can get the sparkler bomb, mm -hmm. uh, what kids will do, and kids actually do this a lot, sadly. Uh, is they will mm -hmm. take sparklers so that you, 4th of July, you know, yes. right? Mm -hmm. If I tape a bunch of those together, I just tape them together, I make a bomb. Mm -hmm. they, instead of burning, they explode because I've, I've confined it somewhat. Um, so that's another interesting thing that you can do, but you have to watch out for because if somebody's collecting a bunch of um, sparklers, uh, then you, know, you have to be careful. I, I'll have to find that video later, I apologize. Uh, in the U.S., there's a couple different, different explosive threats mm -hmm. uh, that kind of go outside the boundary. One of which a lot of kids do in school. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them they kind of do in school. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is called, you may hear it as a bottle bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, some people call it a chemical bomb. Mm -hmm. But essentially what they do is they get a you know a plastic bottle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll put in the chemistry department, they go to the chemistry class, they put a certain chemical in there, usually acid, mm -hmm. aluminum foil, oh. right? Put it in there and you shake it up with this thing on tight and like a balloon, it blows up, but then pow, right? Huh. It blows up. Because huh. you, you shake it and uh -huh. it keeps expanding because uh -huh. it's reacting. Uh -huh. So the gas makes uh -huh. it what we call a mechanical explosion, uh -huh. right? Um, but kids do those a lot. The yep. <laughs> there we go, exactly. So, so a lot of times uh, you'll see these in, in classrooms and science at schools. They tend to do that. Uh, just be careful because it can injure, uh, especially chemicals will get in the eyes. The acid will get in the eyes, blind the kids. So those are, are what we call bottle bombs, and, and kids will do that. They'll experiment. So it's something reacting that creates a gas expansion that in a bottle, like a balloon, you know, it'll blow up, um, that kind of thing. So... The other one, though, is interesting, and those are sparkler bombs. Mm -hmm. So a sparkler bomb, like I said, is you, you can actually put them together. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one is these guys, you know, put their stuff actually on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So this is 512 mm -hmm. sparkler bombs. Mm -hmm. uh, they lit it, and they thought they could run away fast enough. Mm -hmm. Then they put it underneath a dryer, like a washer dryer out in the woods. So... <laughs> <laughs> So those can be dangerous too. <laughs> so you just this, play, huh? Yeah, they're, and it's sparkler, yeah. right? You know, sparklers, everybody's got sparklers. Yeah. But if you combine them together and you tape them up, you confine it, yeah. it'll blow up, it'll react rather than burn, right? Oh. So in this case, 
we have the, the explosive, which is the sparklers. We have the switch, which is the guys lighting it, right? <laughs> and the detonator. So all, all the, the points are there uh, to make the explosive. And again, it can be very dangerous. So a lot of things that we have all around us uh, can be and are being used as explosive devices. The other one I don't have a, a picture of, unfortunately, uh, but it was up here in the Northwest for a while, in addition to pipe bombs, tennis ball bombs. So you take a tennis ball, tennis ball, tennis ball and you know the matches, the old matches, you know, light a match, right? If I cut the heads off of matches, mm -hmm. right, just cut the heads off of all the matches, mm -hmm. and I put 100, 200, 300 of those matches in the tennis ball, oh. and then I tape up the tennis ball, yeah. right, and then I throw the tennis ball, so the tennis ball, yeah. right, and it uh -huh. strikes the matches, uh -huh. and like that. You know, the long time ago, my brother, yeah. he used to the, uh, we called the Songyang, the match, oh. you know, the red thing. Mm -hmm. He used to keep, you know, collected that, mm -hmm. and put it in the can, Yes. And then make the you know he uh the make the technique code you know mm -hmm. and the fire you know like that and then he really loved to make the explode yeah so. but and then one day he got the, the miss you know oh. time so he got to cut to the you know, side and his hand on his hand like, like yeah his yeah <laughs> but as you see sometimes uh -huh. sometimes explosive threats aren't uh -huh. from criminals it's uh -huh. just kids that are curious, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they read about it, they see it on YouTube, and they try it. Uh, so the explosive threats are, are all around us, and I can see them. That's why everybody needs to know about it. So, uh, let's see, it's the testing. All right, so homemade explosives. The reason I go into this a little bit more is because these are the most dangerous, in my opinion. Uh, they're also the ones that tend to go out a lot further. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna recognize homemade explosives as much as we can. Know some of the homemade explosives, what we call precursors. Mm -hmm. So, what ingredients are used to make that explosive cake, if you will? Mm -hmm. uh, the hazards and some of the safeties mm -hmm. for the HME, and then some hazards and safeties even for the precursors, for the ingredients. So, and again, it's common household items: hair bleach, nail polish remover, mm -hmm. uh, fertilizer. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can pick up mm -hmm. fertilizer at the local growing store. Right? It's not individually of themselves, mm -hmm. they're not illegal. Mm -hmm. If I put them together, now they're illegal. They didn't have uh, the law like this, uh, how more than, you know, a limit over by must uh, have to, no? No law yet. In Germany, they have... Doesn't matter, buy to the, you know, bunchy, small, whatever. Well, uh, beauty salon, right? Mm -hmm. Beauty salon buys nail bleach, and uh, hair bleach mm -hmm. and nail polish remover in, in bulk, right? Mm -hmm. Distribution center. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful because then the, the hair salons, right? Mm -hmm. How do they bleach hair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? So it's kind of tough. Uh -huh. In Germany, though, uh, they do have uh, on their intelligence mm -hmm. system, their police intelligence mm -hmm. system is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. If they notice an anomaly, mm -hmm. so they track shipments mm -hmm. of hair Bleach That's why I say, you know. Yeah, so they're watching it, uh -huh. and if they get a spike, uh -huh. like, why, why, did, why is there 100 cases of this uh -huh. thing being ordered over here? Uh -huh. uh, and they have made arrests mm -hmm. on people that are ordering some weird stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's very difficult because mm -hmm. paint thinner, mm -hmm. uh, citric acid. Mm -hmm. So I can mm -hmm. I can distill citric acid. There was a guy in Portland mm -hmm. for the acid. He used Gatorade. Remember Gatorade? Mm -hmm. Powder Gatorade. Mm -hmm. He had powdered Gatorade, mm -hmm. and he was distilling that to mm -hmm. get the citric acid. He was a little weird. I mean, that's a long way to go to get your acid. But you take food grade acid, mm -hmm. and I can I can eventually convert it into the acid. You get the right acid I need. Mm -hmm. So it's it's tough, and that's mm -hmm. why it's up to security guards and school mm -hmm. safety officials and all that to kind of be aware and go, wait a minute, that shouldn't, you know, why do you have air bleach and, and nail polish remover? Uh -huh. So that's why it's important for security guards to be aware of this a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, be aware that this, these are unstable. Mm -hmm. They also may be hazardous in, inhalation hazards. So some of the chemicals that are used. So HME means it to the had, hazard. Uh, uh, homemade explosive. Homemade explosive. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Homemade explosive. Okay. Because <laughs> I have to know exactly. Even, even I'm guilty of that, right? V beds, IEDs, all that. We love, we love our little uh, okay. things. Out. Uh, homemade explosives. Homemade okay. explosives, right? Okay. And they're made. You just different methods are used to make it. However, mm -hmm. in the process of making it, and sometimes after you've made it, mm -hmm. there could be other hazards, mm -hmm. inhalation hazards. If you, if you touch it, it's poisonous. You know, you don't want to eat with it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of hazards surrounding these things because mm -hmm. there's no safety controls. Mm -hmm. uh, all flame spark producing devices mm -hmm. should stay away from HME and HME precursors. Mm -hmm. uh, do not walk or apply unnecessary pressure on HME or precursors. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, only trained or qualified mm -hmm. personnel should even handle it. Don't even pick up the bottle. You're mm -hmm. suspect of it. Mm -hmm. I don't, take a bunch your pictures, mm -hmm. get out of there, mm -hmm. and then let someone else handle it. Uh, and again, uh, this one goes to the inhalation hazard. Mm -hmm. Do not stay in a confined area mm -hmm. with HME or precursors because toxic fumes could be present. You know, the, the 
김정이 김정은 mm. he killed his you know brother oh with the like VX, that uh -huh. yeah. VX yeah VX yeah. region yeah. yeah nerve they had a nerve yeah. agent yeah, yeah. VX yeah. nerve film you know the, Exactly. Wow. And it was a binary, so mm -hmm. they combined it together. So one was not a problem. Both girls had to put it on it, and then it was the binary, and that's what, that's what got them. Mm -hmm. So individually, they may be okay, but combined, it's not too good. Mm -hmm. So these are, these are some examples about some HMEs, mm -hmm. and where can, they, where can a bomb maker get it? Mm -hmm. well, everywhere. Home Depot, your, your beauty salon, <laughs> place, Walmart, Cabela's, everywhere has my bomb making materials. And, and that's my chemicals and what goes beep. Toy stores are great for making stuff that, blow, that beeps, right, because it goes boom. Uh, so it's very easy to do that. Now this is the bad one. This is the one that's pretty popular in the Middle East uh, and is gaining popularity pretty much everywhere. But TATP, uh, this is triacetone triphosphate. Uh -huh. So TATP for short. Okay. Um, but what it is is it's basically, like I said, hair bleach, nail polish remover, and an acid. Uh, and it looks like, it can look like sugar, mostly, uh, although sometimes, it, I think Portland, they said it looked like powder, but mostly sugar, everything I've seen is sugar. It smells a little bit like a, a fruity smell or acetone, you know, so it's like sugar Austin. with a smell. Austin. Acetone, yeah, the paint remover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you smell like uh, That is a straw. But weak, it's very light. Better light. Very gentle, yeah. Mm. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you see the sugar, but it's got a little smell to it, mm -hmm. you're, hey, this is suspicious. Okay. Uh, sometimes the bomb makers, because of its, mm -hmm. its it wears out over time, mm -hmm. you want to keep it fresh, mm -hmm. and so they'll put it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. um, so if you Why? Want, keeps it cooler and dark, so it doesn't deteriorate. So oh. Once you make TATP, mm -hmm. it gradually loses strength over time. Uh -huh. So okay. as an example, London 7-7 bombing, right? Mm -hmm. The one that hit the, the subway and the buses back in, I think it was 2002 or three. Mm -hmm. So 7-7 bombing in London mm -hmm. did a lot of damage. So is it the most uh, hazard, hazard material they uh, care about the cool Cool temp temperature. The bomb makers usually yeah. do so because yeah. they know the good bomb makers know mm -hmm. that if they store it, if I store it outside, it's going to lose its its mm -hmm. its uh, mm -hmm. its power mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. over time, mm -hmm. like food, right? Mm -hmm. So they will keep it in the refrigerator fresh mm -hmm. until they need it, then they go. That's why, right. yeah. yeah. Because you know, that's if uh, the when uh, the security or police officer searching mm -hmm. about the hazardous materials. They must have to look into the core area. Exactly. Look for look for those sugar jars, mm -hmm. right? That may be a little off color. Like, why would you put sugar in the refrigerator? Mm -hmm. it could be nothing, but it could be dangerous, yes. right? Uh -huh. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's right. yeah. And that's important. These little things are very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the older TATP smells very acrid. Mm -hmm. uh, there's variation, so you get anything from uh, you know bright white to yellow, a little bit brown. So it's mm -hmm. different. It's very sensitive. Okay. Friction, spark, static. Like I said, if you unscrew a jar, boom. Mm -hmm. Blow it up. So you basically want a hydrogen peroxide, mm -hmm. right? You want it, your uh, acetone. Mm -hmm. You can get it in different forms, mm -hmm. your nail polish remover or you know in a chemical jar, mm -hmm. uh, and different types of acid. So your battery acid. You can use citric acid, uh, drain cleaners, <laughs> pool cleaners, right? Everything you get at your store, in kitchen. This is all easily easy to get, and that makes one of the worst explosives out there. Uh, like I said, the guy in Portland, mm -hmm. according to the report, mm -hmm. uh, was using Gatorade mm -hmm. to distill out from the citric acid to get acid. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. very easy. A variation, so here's another one. This is HMD, P HMTD, hexamethane tridioxide. So, it looks more like a powder, but mm -hmm. can also look like sugar. Mm -hmm. um, it tastes, it smells a little bit like fish. Mm -hmm. so it has a fishy smell to it. Fishy smell. A little, little fishy smell. Okay. Yep. Uh, it can smell like dead fish because hexamine. Uh, if you dead fish mean it to the what? It smells like fish, yeah, a little, mm -hmm. little like old fish. Mm -hmm. Older fish. Yep, because yeah. the hexamine tablets, mm -hmm. uh, when it's combined, so the chemical reaction in hexamine tablets makes a fishy smell. Humans okay. sense it as a fishy, mm -hmm. it's a fishy smell. Mm -hmm. um, it corrodes, so it actually, if you put it with aluminum, mm -hmm. with metals, mm -hmm. it'll corrode it, it rusts. Rests very easily. So a lot, of, a lot of plastic pipe bombs it tends to put it in. So you'll see these a lot of PVC bombs and plastic bombs and that sort of thing. Uh, it's the easiest to make in the peroxide base. So TATP is hard to make. HMTD is relatively easy to make. So uh, so is the HMTD is more easy to make. Exactly. Uh -huh. A little, little easier to make, but it's less sensitive to heat and shock. Mm -hmm. So TATP will definitely go off usually if you made it well. Mm -hmm. HMTD a little less sensitive okay. uh, and less powerful. Like like TATP less powerful as it ages. Okay. Uh, so T N P T is more sensitive. Exactly. Uh -huh. This is TATP is more sensitive, but HMTD is uh, less. A little less. So exactly. uh, people carry. Is more easy. 
exactly. Uh, user transport. And the TATP. The nickname, Which one is more powerful? The TATP. TATP. Uh, TATP. Yeah, more difficult to make, doesn't last as long, and okay. sometimes too sensitive. You have a danger if you're making it. You're in danger if you, as you make it, as you deliver it. Uh -huh. Now, the, fight, the, the nickname for TATP, there's a name for it. Most Islamic bomb makers in the Middle East oh, really? call it Mother of Satan. Why? Satan. Oh, Satan. Oh, Satan. Satan. Yeah. yeah, like Hero. a, like a mother-in-law, right? Mother of Satan. The mother-in-law of Satan. Because it just goes off. It's like, ah, it's so dangerous, right? <laughs> so their nickname in, in Arabic is Mother of Satan. <laughs> <laughs>